We have not seen inflation this bad since 1982 when the Reagan administration began rapidly raising interest rates to shut it down. Inflation is at a 40-year high. Now, where is inflation coming from? Well, year-over-year used car prices are up 40.5%. Gas is up 40%. Rental cars are up 29%. Utility gas is up 24%. Hotels are up 21%. Furniture up 20%. Bacon's up 18%. Steak is up 17%. Peanut butter is up 15.5%. Pork is up 14.5%. Eggs are up 13%. New cars are up 12%. Uh, ele- electricity is up 11%. Chickens are up 10%. Oranges are up 10%. This has real world impact on you. I mean, just l- get a hold of this. Uh, two liter bottles of soft drinks are up 12%. The price of wine is up 3.3%. The price of beer is up 3.9%. The price of avocados up 24%. Oh my gosh, you poor Gen Zers and your avocado toast. You're going to go broke. Potato chips are only up 1%. Maybe switch to potato chips. Steak is up 24.4%. Ground beef up 13%. Chicken up 11.5%. The only, the only, the only thing that won't cost you more for the Super Bowl is the price of a hot dog has not gone up. The quality of the meat inside might have gone down, but the hot dog has not gone up. This is real world impact. Not only that, but Democrats are saying, but wait, but wait, wages have gone up. That's true. That is true. But under the Trump administration, every month of the Trump administration saw wages increase above inflation. The Biden administration has only had one month, last January to February, where wages did where wages exceeded inflation. Since March of 2021, inflation has outpaced wages uh, somewhat significantly. Wage rates are up about five and a two, five and two thirds percent. Inflation is up seven and a half percent. That means that prices have gone up more than your paycheck, so you actually have less take-home pay now. It, you may feel like you're getting a paycheck, but when you go to the grocery store, everything costs so much more that it's actually you've had a pay cut. Is that not bizarre? We haven't lived in times like this since the late 1970s, and that's something you've got to realize. No American has experienced anything like this since the late 1970s. Even with Ronald Reagan, when inflation was so high, wages were going up as the economy rebounded out of the Carter era. Now wages are going up, but not nearly at the rate of inflation. Inflation outpacing wages means you actually have less less money to spend. That's bad. On top of this, you have the supply chain issues. We got a caller to the show yesterday said there was no meat at his local Walmart in the grocery store section. There wasn't any meat. It wasn't just chicken. There was no meat. This is happening more and more. Now, of course, you've got the truckers uh, on the, the bridge in, in Canada. The bridge is privately owned, interestingly enough, and they've shut down the bridge. That's going to impact car prices and car manufacturing. And in fact, uh, more and more Canadian analysts are saying that it's probably going to be Joe Biden who has to deal with this issue and not Justin Trudeau because Justin Trudeau has dug his heels in so much he can't deal with it. He can't talk to these people because Justin Trudeau is never wrong, can never admit he's wrong, and can never apologize. That's the Canadian prime minister. So you have Canadian policy analysts and members of Justin Trudeau's party in the Canadian parliament begging Joe Biden to get involved. What's the geriatric dementia patient going to do? And for those of you who find it off-putting for me to say that, y'all, are you you not paying attention to what's going on here? 
And I'm one of the people who still thinks Joe Biden's calling the shots at the end of the day, but they're having to curate all of the the answers he can possibly give to narrow him down to the one they want. The supply chain is still broken. Where is Pete Boot Edge Edge? You know where he is? He's on television explaining we need to be talking about moms and moms and dads and dads more than just moms and dads because it's part of life. That's where Pete Boot Edge Edge is. He's not talking about the supply chain. He's on television doing diversity lectures. This is the worst inflation the United States has had since 1982. Federal judges and the Biden administration have restricted gas pipelines. They have made restrictions that impact the gas price here. I got a listener yesterday who angrily emailed me and said that on uh, one of my affiliates, there was an afternoon show talking to someone explaining why gas prices were so high and the analyst was completely um, the, uh, giving Joe Biden a pass, saying it was all foreign issues. Uh, the, the instability in Ukraine was causing the problems and other things. That's not actually true. That has a lot to do with it. The instability abroad does have something to do with it. The uh, Houthi rebels in uh, Yemen launching terror attacks in the Middle East has something to do with it. But there's also domestic issues as well. The Biden administration has increased now regulations on the oil refiners. They've had to shut down oil refineries to comply with the environmental regulations. The Biden administration has increased environmental regulations on the producers of oil, and they're having to go slow as they pump oil. A federal judge appointed by Barack Obama has scrapped leases in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, That has impacted capacity and uh, the future pricing in the futures market. Oil pipelines have been shut down. There's a lack of shippers. And because of government regulations on shipping, it limits the amount of ships available to move oil around. That's all domestic. That's all Joe Biden. It's not overseas. And this has had a real tremendous effect on energy. Uh, Barack Obama appointed judges have shut down a natural gas pipeline that would have reduced natural gas prices. They got that shut down. Natural gas prices are on the rise because the futures are off the chain right now because of all of this. That's not foreign. That's domestic. Things are kind of crazy right now. Home prices continue to go up. There's actually uh, some data out there. We're going to get into it later on, on the housing shortage we have right now. And a lot of it is builders cannot build. Builders cannot build. They don't have the supplies to be able to build the new houses they want to build. They can't get the supplies. The supply chain is broken. We can't clear the ports in Los Angeles and Long and, and uh, Long Beach. The unions refuse to work 24 hours a day. They've regulated 18-wheelers. Did y'all know this? It's impossible to get older model 18-wheelers into California. They get stopped. You can't bring those in. Most people who drive 18-wheelers have older model trucks, so it's reduced capacity to be able to go to the ports. Not only that, they've imposed so many restrictions on the travel time for the 18-wheelers, and the port backups are so long, they get to the port, they load their vehicles, they've got to pause for 12 hours. They can't leave. We have created every sort of logistic nightmare and regulation. And yet the experts out there say, well, it's not Joe Biden's fault. We got to say that or Trump might come back. The amount of energy being produced to excuse the Biden administration for things they could fix is overwhelming. And also... They were told before they were sworn into office by Larry Summers, before January 20th, 2021, before he became president of the United States, Larry Summers published an op-ed and said, you will get inflation if you do this spending package. And the Biden administration laughed him off and said, "Ah, it'll be transitory. Transitory apparently means it'll last until Joe Biden is gone. Larry Summers not a conservative, Larry Summers, a progressive who worked for Bill Clinton and Barack Obama said, you pass this package, you're going to get inflation. 
And the Democrats scoffed at him and said, you can't tell us what to do. And they passed the massive COVID bailout. And then they passed the infrastructure plan. And they keep on passing spending packages. They've overheated the economy. And now it is the working class who pay. The rich don't care. They have enough money. It's the middle class and the working class poor who are the ones stuck footing the bill for the policies the Democrats have advanced in Washington, D.C. They have overheated the economy. They've dumped too much money in. And now they say, well, we should pass Build Back Better. It's paid for. That'll stop it. No. The only thing that'll stop it now is to stop the spending and raise the interest rates. And that causes a recession and people are going to lose their jobs because of Joe Biden's policies. 